What's going on, guys? I'm pro singer David Brilly. I'm back to you with a Discord request. This time, we have BTS singing a live version of their song called Zero O'Clock. Let's have a look. I'm going to stop right there. Beautiful. Oh man, what a cool, cool song. I'm really loving the uh, sound. Um, now, one thing, this is the stage mix, which I'm not 100% certain I can't uh, translate the Korean and haven't really looked super hard into it. But from what I'm hearing, this is the idea of this is basically probably what they either have in their in-ears or what they have coming up on the monitor, something of that sort. So they hear themselves, hear the rest of the groups. It sounds lovely. I mean, the sound is brilliant. I'm really happy with the sound. Uh, what a the, Everybody's voice is just so well, it's so nicely carried. It's not huge amounts of reverb on there, but it's supported. Um, they're doing, there are two separate videos in there. Again, I'm not 100% sure about why. I don't mind either way. It still looks, I like the effect. Um, and I like the, the consistency. So what happens with a lot of these shows, it's everything's done on a click and, um, it's, uh, attached to a time code. The, the entire show, no matter where they are, the entire show will run consistently, um, throughout the, throughout the show, everywhere they go, it'll be the exact same show. Um, and, uh, so they can do put together is from a show in Sydney versus a show in, I don't know, New York, you know, and, it, and they're the, the exact same things. Maybe they'll change an orchestration, but it's exact same thing. So it's always keeps the consistency going throughout, which is very, very um, helpful for everybody. Um, they're doing something with the sound. I don't know who, whether this is, um, a, uh, what it sounds like to me. It sounds like doubling. Now it could be, I don't think it's my computer. I hope it's not my, com please don't be my computer. But it sounds like they are doubling, which does make sense. A lot of pop music, you double. That's what you do. That's how you record the, um, how you record a lot of pop music is that you sing, lay down one track, you lay down the exact same thing, a little bit, a little bit different, but on a, uh, in a stereo on the right and the left, and then you could start manipulating um, how the sound really kind of it gets robust and it's um it's uh, the sound of it just sounds a little bit more i don't want to say processed but just more pop specific you know genre specific to what they're looking for so here what you can do is they could have two separate eqs and two separate inputs for each singer so as they sing one of those inputs can be off by a millisecond and that will create by a few milliseconds but whatever it may be and uh, the EQs will be slightly different where it will separate. It'll sound, give that separation sort of thing. There's also filters you could put on it, patches you could utilize, anything you want like that. Or uh, they could be utilizing their backing tracks very, very lightly, and they could be singing on top of it. Either way, sound, it's perfect. So they get their, their ability to listen to whether it be themselves or each other. I mean, it's, it's flawless. Clearly, they're all singing live here. I'm just not certain what, uh, what effect they're using for, for that cool layered sound that they all have. 
Um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Let's keep going. Before we go any further, if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and smash that subscribe button as well as ring the bell so you get notified every time I post new content. Thanks so much for supporting. Let's get back to it. I'm going to stop here because I know we're getting close to the end. I'll, be, I'll rewind a little bit so we get all that, uh, all of the, the bridge coming up. Again, amazing. These guys just sound, they have such beautiful voices. So floating, nice and high. And then they have the great dynamics where they can really push. So again, um, what, what I feel like every, uh, lots of K-pop bands are, are really phenomenal. But BTS is just one of the best at it, is building these levels and just creating and creating more and, and more dynamics. And just allowing a song to really grow it draws an audience in their lyrics are really really pretty um i i do i really do enjoy them um uh, the the their the english translation so it clearly sounds better in korean but uh it does it's it's really really nice lyrics and uh, they really think about what they're writing work hard on that i'm a fan um the choreography i love that little breakdown into the choreography um not sure what, uh, as far as it looks, they're all singing. It sounds great sometimes, especially in live things. I've spoken about this before, and it got me in a bit of trouble, and I don't care. But uh, no, it, they, in some situations, there are groups and that have historically utilized um, uh, lip syncing. So you have your backup backing track running, full, mixed in, and then you just kind of sing along with it or move your mouth with it. You just kind of act like you're singing. Sometimes people don't even, like I, I know when I said last time, some uh, people kept saying they don't uh, lip sync because they, they say they're very bad at lip syncing. So they purposely don't. Okay. Um, but the, the point, whether they're actively lip syncing or singing lightly underneath or if they're, maybe their monitor isn't turned on for that, but they're singing with it, whatever it may be, the point, only point to it, is that the backup track, the backing track, is singing and doing the work instead of the singer. That's it. Um, that's the only point. Uh, and that, there's nothing wrong with it because it is a, it's, a, it's normal within this genre. Genre specifically. You know, these things are perfectly fine. They're expected. Too much money goes into these concerts for any sort of flub ups because somebody bumps their mic during, during a, a busy choreography section. Now, clearly, this is not a busy choreography section, so I don't think they're utilizing it at all. They sound great. I can hear them breathing. They're not, they're not struggling by any stretch. They're all very well in shape. But uh, no, just in general. These are the things that just kind of happen. As far as my opinion goes on the utilization of backing tracks, 
I'm of the I'm of the position that if you cannot sing because you have laryngitis or you're, you're sick or something like that, it's pretty much the only time you want to use them. Uh, outside of that, um, hop your butt on that treadmill and get singing while you're dancing. Figure it out. <laughs> you know that's that's the gig. You know I I went to college for musical theater. Sing and dance every day, eight shows a week, sometimes ten or eleven, depending on where you're working. Um, so I don't have much uh, I don't have much use for it myself. However, it is industry standard. But if so, hey, more power to them if they're going to do it. I don't mind. And they're again, they're not doing it here. Um, let's keep on going. I'm going to rewind a bit so we can start get all of. Hey everybody, if you're enjoying the content and you would like to see the channel grow, why don't you join us over on Patreon? On Patreon, we're going to have exclusive episodes of reactions, music history, as well as live streaming and performance behind the scenes of my travels and everything there in between all wrapped up in one place. I hope to see you over there. Until then, let's get back to it. The Bridge. All right, here we go. And that was excellent. I really dig. I really, really dig uh, those guys. They're just so darn talented. It's annoying how talented they are sometimes. Oh, they're fantastic. Um, the only thing that always drives me nuts when I see, I don't have my microphone with me, but when I see, let me get my microphone. So <clears throat> this is a microphone. The way you hold a microphone is like this. You want to keep your hand away from this bit because all of this is your input. This gets all the colors of your voice. When you hold it like this and you put it like this, you're not getting anything. So when people do this, I tend to think they're lip syncing because you're not getting good sound. Now, again, in this video, not up until the very, very end, that very, very last chorus, do I think they might not exactly be singing live, but that's really just off of this. Because just, and, and please, you know, if you're loyal fans, I get it. I have tons and tons and tons of favorite artists that hold on to their microphones like this. It'll drive me insane whether it's BTS, NSYNC, Andrea Bocelli, um, Botticelli, uh, <laughs> anybody, Pavarotti, someone holds it like this, it would annoy me, um, no matter what, because you just don't. It's just, it's just, this is, it's better sounding. It, this doesn't look as cool as you think it does. It's better sounding when you do this. It's what the d microphone is designed for. So that drives me nuts. Outside of that, that's just my little rant on that, which I'm sure I'll get in trouble for. Bring it. I love you all. Thank you so very much. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. I will talk to you all soon and catch you on the flippity flop. Cheers. <laughs>